Hello class, this is the content lesson two for Kachina, Ritual and Tradition. So a review of our basic information, the who we're speaking about is Native Americans, the people of the Pueblos, including the Hopi and the Zuni, and then the Navajo as well, who were not Pueblo dwellers, but who sometimes participated in Kachinas and assimilated some of them. So what we're talking about is Kachinas, the where we are, the Southwest United States, the time period, these are seasonal from December to July, the main season being February to July. The purpose, the renewal of the land, life, seasons, and water. And remember, Kachinas appear in three forms, the spirits, the dancers, and the dolls. We study the first two, and then we're creating a Kachina-inspired sculpture. So in order to really start understanding Kachina, you need to understand the Hopi worldview. They have total reverence and respect for all things. They always, whenever they, if they're harvesting food or hunting or getting water, whatever, they always thank whatever it is that they're getting. To be at peace with the things to live in accordance with the instructions of Masaa, the caretaker of the fourth world, who we'll talk about later. But basically, he's the current boss. You can think of it like that. And the Hopi observe their traditional ceremonies for the benefit of the entire world. They really believe that what they do is important, not just for them, but so that the whole world will continue on. And if you want to take a deep dive sidetrack on your own, Google in Hopi Prophecy or Blue Star Kachina, and there's all sorts of crazy ideas out there. Okay, so what they call themselves, which I'm not pronouncing right, but I'll try, the Hopatu Shinumu, which means literally behaving one, one who is mannered, civilized, peaceable, polite, and who adheres to the Hopi way. And in the image, you have a photograph of a young teenage Hopi girl in traditional dress. And if you notice her hair, hair is really important to them. Um, unmarried women wear their hair like this in the two side buns. Sometimes they're in figure eights, sometimes they're in circles. And yes, that was indeed the inspiration for Princess Leia's hair in Star Wars. Uh, as they get older, their hair changes and they have it down and then they cut it and braid it in different ways. The mythology of the Hopi, the basic structure, it's a series of worlds. And there are four worlds so far. What we're living in right now is the world, fourth world. And think of the worlds like a sphere or like an egg, where the first world is in the middle, like the yolk of an egg. And then you have the second world, which would be the white. And then the third world would be the shell. And then the fourth world would be, I don't know, a candy coating. So there's four worlds. We're in number four. There's three more to come. And the Hopi private religious ceremonies and religious education and political meetings that are secret take place in kivas, which is what you're looking at. Kivas are underground chambers. They have a ladder that you descend down into the kiva. There's usually, and it's not showing in here, it's probably over on this side, there's an opening in the floor that goes down deeper. And what this does is it symbolizes the story of people climbing through the world. So it's a private, sacred space. Outsiders cannot go into active kivas. Only the initiated people can go into the kivas. So the story of the worlds, the first world, which is Tukpela, Tawa, which is the sun spirit, and there's a picture of him, created the first world out of empty space. And some of these stories are going to sound a little familiar. So everything was created in the first world, and all things could speak with each other. 
so people could talk to animals and plants and they could talk to us and rocks could talk and water could talk and everything could talk 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 and Tawal created spider woman remember from dream catchers as his messenger between himself and the people so everything started out good the people considered everybody equal but there were trickster spirits around too and one of those tricksters took the form of a bird and convinced people that they were different and different was bad and then people started having wars because they started thinking i'm better than you because i look a certain way or i do this and you don't do that whatever old story so with the wars there came a warning and the people that were good and listened and kept to the laws moved into the earth and started living like ants underground and this saved them as Sotukinang, who is the second of command, or kind of like, you know, if Tawa is the big boss out there, this is the guy that actually runs things, like a manager. And the world was so bad that he destroyed the first world with fire. Yellow is the color of the first world. So the first time everything burnt up when everybody was bad and wouldn't listen. So the second world is Tokpa, and so Tukang created the second world. And he brought the people out of the anthills, and the people were peaceful and multiplied, but they couldn't talk to things. They could only talk to each other. They couldn't talk to animals and plants and rocks, and all of those things couldn't talk to each other either. The animals couldn't talk to the plants, the plants couldn't talk to rocks, etc. The people learned how to trade they invented money they started becoming greedy and they started to fight and they forgot their rules and what the spirits taught them and then only a few that remembered the rules once again were taken back down under earth to live with the ants and the world itself was spun around in circles until it was destroyed by ice and the color of the second world is blue. And over here on the right, you're looking at a Kachina that is a representative of Sotukne. The third world is Kazura, which has some really interesting stuff going on. And once again, he created the world. The ice melted, things warmed up. He put a ladder into the land and the people climbed up from the ants' nests and the people were told, don't forget what we taught you. But they quickly discovered how to build cities and strangely enough, and this is one of the little side paths if you want to go down it, uh, in their stories they had flying shields that they would use to fly on to attack cities from the air. That's curious. And pretty soon the cities were once again at war with each other and only a very few people remembered what they were taught. Well, Spider Woman came along and she took those few good people and she sealed them up in hollow leaves and then left herself in there too. So Tudneg destroyed this world with water because they still aren't following directions and only the good people who were sealed up in the reed boats were the only ones left. There was a giant flood, wiped everything out. The color of the third world is red. And over here on the right, you have a uh, Kachina that is Spider Woman. Spider Woman is usually shown with spider webs on her face or her body somewhere as decoration. And then her hair is always this kind of a white afro that symbolizes how the spider silk is spun out. The fourth world, which is where we're living now, the water went down. 
And when the water went down, Spider Woman got the people out of the boats and guided them on the long journey to the mountain. She wouldn't let them stop until they were in the mountain. She's like, no, in case this happens again, you need to be up high. And when they were in the fourth world, they had a new boss. And this is Masubu, who is Death, the skeleton man. And he gave them four tablets with rules written down so they wouldn't forget them this time. He taught them about agriculture and how to plant crops. And he introduced them to the Kachina spirits who would help take care of them and keep teaching them how to be good. He also told them of Hana, which is the story of the lost white brother. The fourth world's color is white. This is Masuru over here as Kachinas. He always has these kind of branch things on his head. And these are kind of a kind of a skeleton looking face with funny teeth, but he has all the colors on him. And he's not mean or scary. He's just natural and sometimes he's really nice and helps people out. He tries to do his job really well. Okay, so going back to Kachina, they're the spirits of everything, as you know. And they came to live with the Hopi as teachers and guides. But there was a war. And during this time of war, the Kachina fought to defend the Hopi and their physical bodies were killed. The spirits live underground for half a year and then the spirits come back for the other half but they don't have bodies. So that's how they kind of work through the actions of the Kachina dancers. And over here, you can see the Hopi calendar. You have the non-Kachina season, which is August through January. Though the storytelling and the social dances start in December and January. And then the main Kachina season, which is February through July, which is also the time of the spring rains and late winter snow and then planting because you plant early and very deep and growth and growing and harvest. Pahana, remember him? He is the white lost white brother and he was the elder brother who went east when the Hopi migrated. So when Spider Woman got them out of their boats, everybody followed her but this guy and he went in a different direction. And he is to return at the end of the fourth world to lead the Hopi, which I spelled wrong, into the fifth world. His stories about him coming back to do this are very similar to Quetzalcoatl, which is the plumed serpent that is in Aztec belief and mythology. And there isn't a Kachina for this guy. <coughs> Sorry, didn't know that was going to happen. But there is a drawing, and this is one of the Hopi petroglyphs, which is rock drawings, tablet that the story is recorded for. And this is what he looks like. He's obviously really big compared to everybody else. He has kind of this sun spiral shield thing. And the ear gauges, remember from Hopewell about ear gauging and how that's a sign of importance. And then all of his little Kachina friends in the background. So your assignment for this is to do a diagram of the four worlds. So you can use traditional or digital drawing materials. And you can draw it out however you visualize it. You can draw it out as the circles that I talked about, like an egg. You could draw it out like one of the hobo drawings of a mound with different levels. However you want to do it. You have the basic idea of Hopi mythology and belief in multiple worlds. There's a lot more to it, but this is the very basics. And I want you to create a diagram of the four worlds and what they're like. So think about the colors and what happened during those worlds. Be creative. Photograph it and upload. And that's where the symbol 
if you it's on the Hopi flag as well. But this is one of their very important symbols. It stands for both the earth and the four worlds. Okay, so you have quick review. First world, the color is yellow. Everybody was equal. The people went to the earth and ants and it was destroyed with fire. The second world, nobody could talk to anybody but themselves. They invented money, got greedy. Good guys went back down to the ants and it was destroyed by ice. The color is blue. Third world, they built cities. They had the flying shields. They were at war. They were sealed up in boats. There was a big flood. The color is red. And then the fourth world, the governor is the skeleton man. He gave them rules. He taught them about agriculture, brought the Kachinas in, talked to them about the lost white brother, and the fourth world's color is white. Okay, when you're finished with your diagram, please photograph it and upload.